My brothers and sisters, in the next 10 minutes, I would like to talk about the topic of marriage and talaq. Talaq meaning divorce. We need to save ourselves from marital discord by choosing the spouse for the right reasons. It doesn't mean the most handsome person is who you should run after or the most pretty of the girls is the one whom you feel will be the best wife. Not necessarily. You need to look for character, for conduct and for commitment to Allah. If there is commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is known as deen, the religion, the faith, the inclination to Allah. And if there is character and conduct, you will enjoy the person's company. This is what you need. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us and he speaks about divorce. He speaks about the rights of men and women. Many people, they come into the house and the man says, I'm the boss here. I'm the, I'm the boss here. So you do exactly as I say, you're a woman, you're supposed to be under me and I can tell you anything. Now come, kiss my toes. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Honestly, there are people who do this. There are people who say this. But Allah says in verse number 228, Indeed, for them, meaning for the women, are rights just like the men have rights. You need to fulfill each other's rights. Some of them are interlinked, some of them are the same, some of them the man has more rights than women and some of them the woman has more rights than the man this is allah's plan so allah says fulfill each other's rights receive into each other help each other remember that is your spouse make life easy for them not difficult and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about the scenario where the marriage is broken down totally broken down in the in the verses of surah al-baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to us how divorce takes place. You only ever issue one talaq. If you really have to divorce your wife or a woman, you need to only issue one talaq, one. A lot of people think, oh, sh rattle out this word thrice and that's the way you divorce a person. That's wrong. That is actually a sinful way of doing things. You need to know that it's wrong. You only ever issue one talaq. And thereafter, you are given approximately three months to reconcile if you wish. And if you haven't, then she can marry whom she wants. And as it is, your life continues. But if you have reconciled within three months, Alhamdulillah, you can take her back and you can live once again. And then you issue a second talaq if you do not get a law. Well, thereafter, after the second one, you only have the last meaning the third when the third happens you cannot get back to her so people say i've divorced my wife thrice i can't get back to her why well you tried once you tried a second time now the third time let someone else try subhanallah <laughs> perhaps they will get along with someone else the third time meaning once you divorced her you issued one talaq and then you lived again, you didn't get along. Everything broke down beyond repair. Another talaq went through. It broke down again beyond repair. Now a third time, if she marries someone else, perhaps there will be better qualities in that person. And if without your planning or interference, she happens to be divorced from the second person, it only makes sense that she will now appreciate you. The reason is she will realize this man had 20 weaknesses, but the guy I went to after him had 200 weaknesses. Subhanallah. This man used to smoke 10 cigarettes. That guy used to smoke 10 packets of cigarettes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So then when she comes back, she will appreciate it. So this is one of the very important points that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises. However, when the period of idda is being passed or is passing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you don't take back a woman in order to punish her some people say you know what I'm going to punish this woman I'm not going to divorce her I'm just going to keep her and let her hang let her do what she wants Astaghfirullah did you know that she can actually get what is known as a fasakh fasakh meaning she can get a nullification of that marriage
She can. She can actually do it without you. Do you know that? If she has legitimate reason. A lot of the women don't know this because we've kept them in the dark. We don't want them to know this. But they can actually get a nullification of that nikah. Allah says, keep them in goodness, on good terms, or release them on good terms, but don't hold them back in order to punish them. That is mentioned, verse number three, uh, 231 of them, Tul Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُمْسِكُونَ ضِرَارًا لِتَعْتَدُوا Do not hold them back in order to harm them, in order to punish them. Release them. Let them go. Let them go happily with a smile. Perhaps they will regret. Perhaps they will say, no, this man was really a good man. Look, he released me and I'm gone home. Subhanallah. He didn't harm me. He didn't hurt me. And he didn't hold me back to punish me. So Alhamdulillah, it was something good. However, let's remember my brothers and sisters, we save ourselves from the punishment of Allah. When you hold back a woman, knowing that you don't want her, but you don't want to release her, Allah will punish you at some stage in this world and the next. May Allah not do that to us. May we not do that to anyone. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something interesting to the fathers of the girls. We all have dreams. We all have children, mashallah. May Allah bless those who don't have children with children. But those of us who do, when they grow older, we all have a dream. We want to get them married here. We want to get them married there and so on. But we don't realize sometimes they want to marry someone we didn't even expect. So if they want to marry that person, for as long as their deen is in order and their character is in order, let them get married. Because this child is not yours. It's actually Allah's child. It's actually Allah's worshiper. You are only a custodian for a period of time. Allah can take that child away at any time. You need to fulfill that examination question. The answer needs to be correct. What is the question? Will you let this amana of mine, Allah is saying, marry according to what I have dictated? Or do you want to add your own flavor and pepper? Whether it's racial, you know, a racial issue or any other issue tribal issue sometimes it's an issue of nationalities and so many and the things all that we have made up it's not from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember this so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about this but what is more difficult is when your child is married and then she's divorced from that man and she wants to go back to him but you as a father or mother saying, no way, don't go back. No way, I'm not happy. I will disown you. I'm never going to talk to you again. And the child is saying, but dad, I've got two children with this particular man. And you know what? I think it's okay. I will manage. I will cope. No way. We don't want over my dead body. So you're making dua. Oh Allah, let this man die over his dead body. Oh Allah, he said over his dead body. We don't want that to happen. My brothers and sisters, listen to what Allah says. Allah says, فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ أَنْ يَنْكِحْنَ أَزْوَاجَهُنَّ إِذَا تَرَاضَوْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Verse number 232 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, when the idda is over, they are divorced. Do not stop them from getting married again to their spouses who, whom they were divorced from. And if they have agreed, both of them are happy, they want to get back together. You don't block them. Imagine this is a verse of the Quran and some of us go against it openly, clearly, blatantly. Never. Don't ever go back. And Allah is saying, let them go back. They know if they want to let them go. I want to say one last point before I close. Let your child make a mistake rather than them becoming mad and depressed rather than your home breaking. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Inshallah, we will continue tomorrow. Until then, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhan